In this video, I'm going to show you how you can change the retake quiz option on your quiz results slide to force users to retake the entire course. Okay, so this comes from a question that I got from Joan. Joan asked, I'm making a course with the test out option so the student can choose to test out of the course one attempt to pass or take the course and then the test. If the person chooses to test out and fails, I want the retake button to navigate to the beginning of the course, the first fail, and to the beginning of the quiz if he fails thereafter. However, if the person chooses not to test out, watches the course first and fails, I want the retake button to navigate to the beginning of the quiz. Is it possible to set multiple states for the retake button or is there a workaround? Thanks in advance. So Joan, I think I have a workaround for you, but there are some stipulations that will come into play here. Um, let's take a look at, uh, at what I've done and, and I'll, I'll walk you through how to create something similar within your own course. And hopefully everyone else can benefit by this as well. So what I've done is I've created a very simple course structure. It's got some content at the beginning. It has a couple of question slides at the end, and then your standard quiz results slide. But I've made some changes. The, on the first title slide here, you call the course whatever you want. I've got two buttons here. I've got the first button called Begin Quiz, and the second button called Begin Course. Now, the first time a user comes into this course, they will see both of these buttons right there, and they can make a choice. They can either go straight to the quiz at this point, or they can begin the course. Now, I just randomly chose the Begin Course button, but I could have chosen the Begin Quiz button or even a third transparent button that didn't do anything, and I've decided to include it in the quiz. The reason I'm doing this is that the action of retake the quiz on the quiz results slide will take you to the first question of the quiz. Well, if this is now part of the quiz, that button will bring you back to the beginning of your course, in this case, slide one. I'm not adding the value to the total of the quiz, so this will not affect the learner's score in any way. It will, however, affect the number of questions. So it will show up as uh, a potential number of points, and it will suggest that there is um, another question within the pool of questions. So for example, if you had 10 questions at the end of your course, doing this will make it seem like there's 11. So there's going to be some things, you know, it's, like I said, it was a workaround that we're doing here. So there are some things that you're going to need to do, and I'll point those out as we go. So if the user decides to begin the course, they'll simply be brought to the, the course content. I've created just some dummy pages here. On the last page of the course content, I have a, an on enter action where I simply assign a variable that I created. And this variable, I called it variable underscore content underscore viewed. Uh, its default value was zero. But uh, when you arrive at this slide, in other words, you've looked at the course content. So we're assigning that a value of one. Right, And then what we do is then from there we move on to the quiz and the users, of course, will answer the questions and eventually arrive on the quiz results slide. Now here's where some things actually happen. Oh, and incidentally, uh, if you happen to have um, the question three of three, question three or two of three and so on, um, this is not going to report correctly. Uh, it's going to tell you that there are four questions because, again, that, that uh, button on the very first page is included in the quiz. So you may wish to delete this from being on your uh, quiz question slides. So back to the quiz results slide. A couple things I've done here. I've relabeled um, and you can use whatever terminology you wish. I just said redo, as in redo course or redo quiz. It's somewhat ambiguous. 
Uh, and then of course I have exit uh, course, which is uh, my action on successfully completing this course is exit. So I changed it from continue to exit. The other thing that I did was uh, with the quiz properties inspector, um, you of course have this uh, choices of the items that you wish to display. Again, because the number of quiz questions is affected by creating that, uh, that button that's included in the quiz, I unchecked it, I unchecked correct questions and I unchecked total questions and then I re-spaced everything out so it doesn't show that information. Um, it would be ideal to have that information but unfortunately the numbers are going to be incorrect and it will just confuse your learners. What they will see of course is how many points they scored, what the maximum score was and the percentage that that works out to which really is what's important in the end. So um, on this page as well, I've created an advanced action on the loading of this page. Let me show you what's involved in this. So I created this, I just called it course content. It could be whatever you wanted to call it. Um, so I have it actually take a look at the variable that we created and, um, and changed when a user is viewing the course content. So if, the course, uh, sorry, if the variable content viewed is equal to one, in other words, if the user has looked at the course and not just jumped straight to the quiz, then we're going to hide the jump to content button. Remember that's on the first page. And then we're gonna show the jump to quiz button. Else, right, in other words, if this isn't true, then we'll show the jump to content button and hide the jump to quiz button. So what that does is essentially it says, if the user has looked at the course, we're going to show the, or we're going to hide the jump to content because the, a retaking the quiz is just a retaking quiz and we'll give them an opportunity to jump straight to the quiz. If they didn't view the content, we're going to hide the quiz button and force them now to view the content because, you know, clearly they didn't pass the course. They need to learn what it is that they need to learn. Let me show you what the effect of this is in actual practice here. So let's preview this and we'll just preview it um, as, as an HTML5 in browser. So here we are. We'll begin the, let's, let's skip the course and go straight to the quiz. So here's our first quiz question. I will purposely get this wrong. And again, you're going to want to hide this because as you can see here, it's reporting question two of four. Uh, clearly there's no question one, so uh, that's not going to work. So we're going to hide that in the final version of this. Uh, incorrect. Let's choose a different wrong answer. And third question. There we go. So now we're at our quiz results slide. I got zero out of a maximum score of 30 and therefore I get zero percent and I've got one attempt under my belt. So I can, uh, of course, I can exit the course, um, but I'm going to redo this, right? And this is going to bring me back to the very first slide of the course. Notice the quiz, jump to quiz button is gone. I now have to begin the course. So it forces me to view the content, click next, click next, click next. And now of course, let's get it wrong once more. Let's uh, fail. So we'll just choose some wrong answers here. I'll get one correct answer. So I got 10 out of 30 or 33.33%. This is my second attempt. Still not a very great result. I'm going to redo, which is going to take me back to that first uh, first slide again. But this time, begin quiz. So it jumps me straight to the quiz. I don't have to view the content at this point. So let's pass it this time. There we go. I got 100%. It took me three attempts, but I did successfully complete this course. 
And of course, now I can exit the course and return back to my learning management system, whatever that might be. Guys, if you like the videos that I produce for you, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you thought this video was helpful or useful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.